Hi, how are you? I hope you're having a good day. And if not, I hope I can make your day a bit better. Guess what? I've got an overhead tripod, so now I can have a go at making art videos. If you follow me on Instagram, you know at the moment, instead of doing Inktober, I'm doing something called Enchanted Nightmares, which is a prompt list that I came up with myself. Um, I'm already behind because I went to see the Faust and Triennial, really recommend it. Um, but I was hoping maybe you'd like to draw along with me on my next prompt, which is Demonic Artifacts. I've come up with three ideas and I thought I would do one today and then maybe turn it into a series as I get used to using my tripod. You can uh, join in with my prompt at any time that you like. Because it's not actually Inktober, you can just do it whenever. I'd love to see, actually. Um, so I've got the hashtag Enchanted Nightmares on Instagram, and I guess you can use it on Twitter. I'm not that active on Twitter, though. So, uh, But if you tag me at Enchanted Violin, I should be able to see it. <laughs> Right, this is the pencil that I use. It's a uh, Favor Castell mechanical pencil. I prefer mechanical pencils just because you don't have to sharpen them, but honestly, you can use whatever you like to sketch with. Uh, today I'm going to do a traditional demonic artifact, which is a planchette from a Ouija board. Do you know Ouija boards? I, I have to admit, I'm quite scared. I've never... <laughs> I've never played one before, and I don't think I ever will, though I do really like horror films. Are you horror fans? Let me know. So this, of course, is not just any planchette, <laughs> it's a demonic planchette. So I was thinking, we've got a hole on a Ouija board, that hole would be so you can read which letter, which letter the planchette was pointing at. Uh, so I figured, to make it a bit creepy, because it is Halloween season, uh, if we put an eyeball in there. So let's shove an eyeball in. Give it some bones. <laughs> Maybe make these into eyeballs too. I'm doing my best here to um, not put my head under the camera. I get a horrible feeling this looking a bit wonky because I'm not used to drawing <laughs> and drawing from this position. So one minute, I'm just gonna pull it so I can see where I've gone horribly wrong and quickly correct it. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get better at this. <laughs> Hopefully. There we go. Okay, right, we're back. <laughs> so that's corrected. Now, uh, aesthetically, I wanted uh, to be surrounded like flowers because that's really popular at the moment, isn't it? Things like um, planchettes and bones being surrounded by flowers. Um, but there are like so many flowers to choose from. I, I thought I'd better feed them rather than me just making up flowers or just picking some random flowers. So I thought to myself, where does the planchette come from? France. So I've picked French flowers to decorate around the planchette. So first flower I want to use is a French lily. So let's draw a French lily in. Just loosely. Do you like lilies? Do you like flowers in general? Do you like to garden? I like to garden. I'm not very good at it, but I like to do it. <laughs> and let's put the uh, stamen and I forget what these bits are called. I know one's a stamen, but I forget the rest. And then another French flower is the poppy. So let's put a poppy in here. Coming from England, poppies 
very identifiable to the English as well. Um, but I think you guys in California, you have puppies as well, right? And let's put a puppy bud here as well. Actually, I, my favourite puppy is called a Mechanopsis. That's a blue poppy. It's a Himalayan poppy. Love it. I'd love to be able to grow one in our garden. And the last flower I'm going to choose to go with our planchette, which uh, is French or famous in France, is an iris. So let's put the bottom part of an iris in. Just the bottom part. Hopefully it will look more irisy when it's done. Hmm. I'm just alter this a bit. Not feeling it. <laughs> Put another leaf there like that. Give it a bit more balance. Okay. Uh, should we put in some more eyeballs? Because I don't know. Is this is this demonic enough yet? I'm not sure. <laughs> I guess anybody who's ever played the Ouija board and got a scary response would say it's demonic enough. As I was saying, I, I'm too much of a coward. Even though I love scary things, I could never play a real Ouija board. <laughs> hmm, we should put another eyeball. I feel like we need one more to balance it out. Should we stick one here? Eyeball. Eyeball. Radio. You know what? I'm happy with that. I'm good with that. Should we start inking? Let's start inking. Now, what I was doing this time with Inktober, uh, not that I actually like announced it on my Instagram, was showing that you can make pretty art with kind of quite cheap, and basic um, items. Because I'm not, I'm not well off. <laughs> I can't afford all the fancy stuff. As you can see, my needed eraser when I got it was seventy five percent off. But I do, I do recommend a needed eraser. Do you know the difference between needed erasers and uh, just a normal eraser? If not, I'll show you in a minute. This one is just a, a Bic eraser I got in Lidl at the back to school sale. So I'm just going to look for my fine liners. Oh, here's my ruler. It's so cute! Love my ruler! <laughs> I have an online comic called Companions, which I'll link down below. Um, and from doing that, I actually uh, learnt or settled on a lining technique where I use coloured lines which is why I'm searching for all my fine liners I use big intensity fine I also, because um, they didn't have the yellow in the set I got got uh, some Montmartre fine liners I'm not sponsored by any of these people I just genuinely like them I can recommend these. I actually got these in TK Maxx, which uh, in America is TJ Maxx. I love Montmartre. I can very much recommend Montmartre. Uh, their gouache and their fine liners. Uh, I can't say for other things, but I can say for those. Right. So, what colours do we need? Oh, also this. <laughs> this is just uh, <laughs> your basic fine liner from Sainsbury's. <laughs> right. Colours. We need red for puppies. So let's do a red poppy.
ink has dried so now we can erase the pencil sketches underneath just using my cheapo thick eraser rubber if you're from the united kingdom got it in Lidl, middle aisle <laughs> at the uh what was it the um the back to school offers good time to get erasers <laughs> So the difference between just like a normal eraser and a kneaded eraser is that a kneaded eraser is much more gentle. It will lighten the lines rather than completely erase the lines. Like this kind of eraser. And kneaded erasers tend, well, definitely don't leave, uh, what do you call these? Sprues? That's what you call it when you're making a model, isn't it? Sprues or just rubbings. Let's get rid of these. These are the downside of <laughs> using a normal eraser. Oh, my bad. Ben's moved. So actually, you know what? I'll very quickly show you the difference. I mean, if you've been, if you go on art YouTube a lot, you'll know the difference between a kneaded eraser and a normal eraser. But just in case this is your first encounter with one, I'll quickly show you. So, uh... Here's my two pencil lines. This is what a normal eraser does. Completely removes it. Kneaded eraser, which is all stretchy and kneaded, will lighten it, which is really great if you're not doing outlining like this, you can still see it. So it's good for like, uh, if you're doing watercolors or a colored pencil drawing. But because I've drawn over it, I don't need the lines anymore. So as part of my showing that you can do Inktober on the cheap. Oh, I've just wanted to. <laughs> so as part of me showing that you can do Inktober on the cheap, I am using Ohuhu markers. Not just any Ohuhu marker. I splurged and, well, I say splurged. They're much cheaper than Copic markers. But I got the brushed pastel brush pens. I'm kind of in love with them. They don't have the same variety uh, in colour that Copic use. Um, you can get, with a single pen, Copic can create quite a few different shades with a single pen. Whereas uh, with Ahu markers, probably you can get three different shades with the same pen. Uh, so it's, you, you are paying more with a Copic marker to get more shades from a single pen but actually for the price the difference in price I can really recommend a hoo-hoo markers so let us got my handy dandy swatches <laughs> let's see what colors would be good I might go in with normal colored a hoo-hoo's um the non-pastel colors if I think it's all coming out a bit light uh, I think definitely the poppy should be white prawn. Oh, I've got my bit of plastic underneath so that it doesn't bleed through my sketch pad. Always do that with alcohol markers, unless you're using special alcohol paper. Otherwise you will get bleed through. Radio, so let's go in and start colouring. <laughs>
one demonic artifact, one floral planchette, and one first ever art YouTube video. Woo! High five, everybody! <laughs> Hopefully uh, you stuck around to the end. If you did, thank you so much. Let me know what you enjoyed most. Let me know what art you'd like to see me do in the future. If you could like, subscribe, and share this video, leave a comment, that would be amazing. If you could visit me on my Instagram, have a look at my comic, all links will be in my description. That would be amazing too. And hopefully, I'll see you soon for another art video. Bye bye! <laughs>